Greetings y'all, this is Priestess Monjashola. I just wanna let you guys know about my free mentorship when Magic is Black Academy. It is a 12 week intense, a fast paced mentorship, okay? It's gonna be about Ifa, Hudu, and metaphysical spirituality, okay? It is awesome, awesome, an awesome way to begin your healing, to begin remembering who you are and why you are, okay? You guys, make sure you guys check out the link in my bio before you go ahead and check that out. I mean, why not? It's free, all right? But it is work. So come in and ready to work. You have daily assignments and assignments that you need to get done in three tiers, all right? It's definitely, definitely worth it. I've been helping a lot of people. I started my own mentorship, okay? So this is all about what Priestess Mojashola is teaching you, okay? So go ahead, click the link in my bio, get into this 12-week free mentorship. It's going to help you in your healing and remembering who you are. Peace. It is Easter Sunday, and a lot of people celebrate Easter for Yeshua or Jesus' resurrection. He rose on the third day. Um, sometimes people um, celebrate Easter for fertility and other pagan um, type understanding. All right. There's so much going on in the LBC. It's kind of hard being Snoop Deal. I'm um, sorry. But so much going on in the world. There's so many different ways on how you want to worship or venerate this day. OK, so today I want to talk about um, the resurrection after your dark night of the soul. Um, I want to speak about this because a lot of you guys, which are my babies and my students, are going through this. Um, have gone through this, still going through this, and I want to talk about this because it's very, very vital, uh, you know, about your, what to do, how to feel during this dark night of the soul, and how to come out of it, um, letting you know you're not crazy, you know, and letting you know that someone, you know, is here to understand because this is a part of your awakening period, okay, this is how you awaken. This is a part of your ascension process. Everyone has to die to self before they level up spiritually, okay? So at some point, most of us go through a phenomenon called dark night of the soul, all right? Although we try to run from it, it's still there. Everyone's going to experience this, okay? In my experience with dealing it with myself and having other friends and being a, you know, a mentor, I would say people deal with this from the age of 26 to 33, okay? Hence the fact that Jesus died and rose again at 33. To me, that's when I experienced this off and on in my life. And I've noticed that in others' life, that is like the key time where people are going through this, all right? Now, we try to cover it up, it's still there. Although we try to put on a happy, smiley face, we try to pretend it away, it's still there. We're still feeling it, we're still going through it. Now, while some of us seek relief in religious thought, spiritual philosophy, psychology, you know, still others just can't find the reason how to, why, why we're going through this. And this word leads to people having, you know, addictions and try to take mind-numbing external pursuits in order to not feel what they're supposed to feel. You know, we have to feel it to go through it, all right? Now, we're all born with souls. Not all of us know how to fully embody and integrate them into our human experience. The truth is that our, in our modern world, we live egocentrically rather than soul-centrically. We live in the 3D mostly instead of the 5D and knowing how to merge both of them together as one for that alignment. Now the dark night of the soul is a period of utter spiritual desolation, disconnection and emptiness in which one feels totally separated from the divine. Those who experience a dark night feel completely lost, hopeless and consumed with melancholy. The dark night of the soul can be likened to severe spiritual depression and it's a, it's a type of spiritual emergency in a way. 
Now the concept of having a dark night of the soul has existed for a long time. And it spans back to the 16th century with the poet, which was a Catholic mystic named St. John of the Cross. And he wrote a poem called La Noche Oscura de Alma, The Dark Night of the Soul. One of his quotes from that poem is, if a man wishes to be sure of the road he's traveling on, then he must close his eyes and travel in the dark. Now, traditionally, the dark night of the souls refers to the experience of losing touch with God, the creator, and being plunged into the abyss of godless emptiness. The modern understanding of having a dark night of the soul, however, is not exclusively a religious one, but can often mean losing all meaning in life. Sometimes we feel out of touch with the divine and we even feel betrayed or forsaken by life itself, okay? We could feel we have no solid or stable ground to stand on. Some of the questions that we ask during this period is, why am I alive? Why do good people suffer? What is the truth in life itself? Is there a God? Is there an afterlife? What is all this? What's my purpose? Why, why, why? Now, a lot of things happen in this world due to humanity's collective consciousness, okay? Um, when they say that other people suffer and other people pay for it, you could see that. Just like us suffering from the sins of our father, a lot of us suffer because of the energy and the vibrations that others create in this world. So it's definitely humanity's collective shadow, okay? Now, the dark night of the soul is really an initiation. Before you go to the next level, you have to die to yourself. Your ego is literally dying. You must embrace this with grace and you have to realize that there's no need to fear. You're gonna find yourself losing interest in everything. You feel like you're depressed, like there's no meaning in life. You're also gonna feel destructive, lost, unwilling to go on in life even. Family and friends and even society will even start to look different to you. This is because it's preparing for you to change. These are just only symptoms of the greatest change that you're gonna undergo in this lifetime. So we have to realize that this life is about transformation. It is about metamorphosis, okay? So instead of us asking why, we have to ask, what is the lesson? What is it that I need to learn? What is it that I need to see at this time in my life? Now, it could feel like depression, but depression and the dark night of the soul are two different things. Depression is being more of a chemical imbalance and sometimes can be hereditary. The dark night of the soul is purely a spiritual depression. Now, when depression ends, not much changes in your life in terms of your beliefs, your values and habits. However, the dark night of the soul, when it ends, everything in your life transforms and it becomes wondrous again. You're even vibrating even more higher than what you were previously. Now, one of the big differences between the dark night of the soul and depression, again, is that regular depression is primary, primarily uh, more clinical than anything else, okay? More about um, 3D emotions. And the dark night of the soul is primarily spiritual that can't be treated or cured through therapy or psychiatrically, okay? So those of us going through the dark night of the soul can often feel an increase or sense of hopelessness because not really could anyone could really truly understand you or diagnose you during this time. So you're gonna feel an ease and despair as you discover that no one could really save us but ourselves. So this makes us feel even more alone, more frustrated and confused about the world and about ourselves. <laughs> Now, there's seven signs that, that lets you know that you're going through a dark night of the soul. So the first one is you feel a deep sense of sadness, which often verges into despair. This sadness is often triggered by the state of your life, humanity, or the world as a whole. The second one is a sense of feeling unworthy, not good enough. The third sign is that you have a constant feeling of feeling lost or condemned. Like you're, you're condemned to suffer all your life. And this makes you feel empty. The fourth sign is you possess a painful feeling of powerlessness and hopelessness. 
The fifth sign is that your will and self-control is weakened, making it difficult for you to act. You have no reason to go on, move forward, wash your ass, feed your kids. You just don't want to do anything. Six is you lack interest in fine or joy in things like you once did before. Seven is you crave to return home again. You no longer want to be here. Okay, so a lot of these things do sound like clinical depression. All right, they kind of mirror each other. And this is the reason we, why we have to dig deep and look into ourselves and really pinpoint what's really going on. Okay, so it's the friction within us that causes the mirror of our souls to be polished enough for us to glimpse our true nature. Your breakdown is your breakthrough to your new beginning. The human is always running from his shadow. We're taught that everything that's dark or associated with darkness is bad, it's evil. But the light is truly the illusion. The light hides the truth. Darkness reveals the truth. We must change how we view darkness. Yin and yang is necessary. We must learn how to integrate our shadow to become whole with our light. Balance, iwapele. Don't push, but allow. No things are happening for you and not to you. Don't take it personal. Even the worst experience in life is for you. This is how you evolve and not play the victim. Now, people speak the dark night of the soul as some kind of, they have to fix something that they must correct, something that they went through in life or something that altered them in life, okay? But what these people think is a dark night of the soul, they may have just been a darkness that they have within themselves, especially when they speak of it egotistically, claiming that their bad characteristics is why they are who they are. A true dark night of the soul leaves a long lasting impact on you. It changes you completely. When you exit a dark night of the soul, you would discover that something is always taken away from you for the better, such as your beliefs, your perception, your former meaning in life, or even in rare cases, your ego. But a lot of these things stem from your ego. Now, your dark night of the soul is your wind of change, your cocoon of transformation. It is an ego death whereby you shed the ego that prevents you from embodying your soul. If you try to avoid the hard work or breaking down your old confining structures, you won't have what it takes to truly embody your essential nature. Before any growth or healing can occur, there must be a process of destruction and complete annihilation of everything that you thought brought you happiness, especially if it's attached to the 3D. Most people experiencing the dark night realize this, that nothing makes them happy. Not bodily, not sexually, not emotionally, not materialistic, no politic, no social, not even spiritual, nothing makes them happy. And this is the start of your purification process. It's like we're starting from ground zero. Now, in reality, it is absolutely terrifying to have the ground beneath your feet ripped out from you. And this is precisely why we experience a dark night of the soul. This is that ground zero. This experience is the greatest teacher of all of, for all of us because it illuminates what is fragile the subject of change and for us to grow and the decay that is within us. Now we're left with a feeling of great inner emptiness, but within this emptiness, we eventually come to see what, we, what can never come, what can never go, change or die. And that's the truth of who we are, what makes us pure, what makes us peaceful and blissful in our conscious essence, okay? Now, there's three ways that spiritual awakening can occur. The first is the hands of a wise spiritual teacher. The second is through a spiritual drive of soulful mature people like our elders. And the third is spontaneously due to life experience. 
okay? Spontaneous awakenings arrive in a number of ways, a terminal diagnosis, old age, a near-death experience, a physical accident, a loss of a loved one, or a romantic breakup, okay? It could also include the destruction of your home, your homeland, suicidal depression, or the complete loss of your faith in general. The dark night is a herald omen of change. It lets us know that we can't continue living the way that we've been living. There's no growth, no awakening in life. There's no awakening to life without first seeing and acknowledging our existing disappointment. Now, acknowledging our deployment, disappointment becomes a, makes us become aware of what's deeply held within us, okay? How we feel incomplete, incomplete, how it just resonates in our body, where there's nothing there for us to give meaning to life, okay? It lets us know what's missing, and this is how we find what needs to be added in order for us to feel complete or in alignment to have a sense of purpose. So those that have experienced or are currently experiencing a dark night of the soul will know that something very fundamental at core is out of level, out of focus, or completely lacking. So we have a sense that much more is possible, even though you don't know exactly what it is. So this is why you have to not question the why and truly try to tap in deep. Okay, this is why meditation is necessary because it gives you the answers that you need so you know what to add into your life during this time, okay? So it's really a process of shedding away your old home and going to or in search of a new one. This process requires a huge leap of faith into the unknown and can come quite a sudden it could become a quite sudden uh, frightening pace. Like you could be scared shitless. Everything that you thought you knew, everything that you were comfortable in, it becomes absolute. It's just, it feels like, sometimes you do feel like you wanna die. It feels like that because you're literally dying. But this is how you find out how strong you are, what you're made of what you're built for, okay? You're gonna go through this fire coming out like gold. So it's important for us to understand where we are at this time, okay? Now there's no map, there's only a flickering luminance of your soul to light the way. This is why we have to continue to be in one with our soul. Even though we feel like we're dying, still see the light at the end of the tunnel, okay? The darkness is where we become illuminated. And the dark is where we can see our magic, what we're made of, star stuff. You can't see the stars in the light. You only see it in the dark. Okay? And that's the essence of what we're created in. You have to give up being the caterpillar to be the butterfly. You have to let go of that. Stop holding on to being the caterpillar. You're going to become something even much more brighter, more beautiful. Okay, you're gonna be able to fly. You have no obligation to your former self. You can allow yourself to become a whole new being into your real self. You can still choose to have a positive outlook no matter how things look. No experience is wasted when we find the gems that are lying in it. All of this is a part of your awakening. This is your chance to restart yourself and align yourself on your true path. Nothing lasts forever, even in our joys and pains. Now, what do you see yourself when you look in the mirror? Do you truly see yourself or do you see an avatar? The dark night of the soul allows you to get to know the real you. Everyone will go through this. It could take years to go through. Like I said oh, earlier, you're going to come out like gold, but you got to make sure that you do not retreat. Don't focus on the trial and the tribulation. Focus on the experience and the lesson at hand, because it's the gatekeeper to your rainbow, to your promise, to your ascension. 
Now we got to make sure that we're vibrating higher, even through this dark night of the soul. We want to make sure we're trying to listen to sounds, frequencies that vibe, help us vibrate higher. We're drinking things that are vibrating higher. We are eating things that are vibrating higher. Even the people that are around us, we have to make sure they're elevated spiritually as well. The solution to one's suffering and disconnection from the divine can divine realm can be a method of cutting away, dislodging, and clearing the old pieces of your life so that you could begin afresh. Okay. So we can't do the old things that we used to do to get to the next level. We have to make sure that even through this pain and the suffering and this dark agony, that we're still applying things that are higher vibrational. Okay especially when you understand what you're going through. So guys, I hope that this could encourage you and support you if you're undertaking this descent into your underworld, okay? Like I said, it's very, very vital to understand and know about your dark night of the soul. Everyone is gonna go through this, but just know that it's for your ascension and for your higher good, dying of your current self or who you thought you are to become who the most high created you to be. Okay, my loves. No caught in happy.